jump. We are talking the curse of Wolf Mountain, also known as simply Wolf Mountain. And this is directed by David Lipper and written by Kelly Price. Uh, both of those gentlemen actually have starring roles in the movie uh, playing brothers. You've also got some familiar names here in Tobin Bell and Danny Trejo, both of whom have small roles in the film. So what is the story? Well, it focuses on primarily um, Price's character, who is a, is a young man who many years ago had a traumatic uh, experience on this mountain where his parents e either died or possibly even killed uh, by a figure that could that he that Price's character remembers as kind of like a wolf man. He has this vague image of this kind of like wolf man like figure potentially standing over the area where his parents maybe were were either killed or possibly they committed suicide. You'd have to watch the movie and find out what happened. But he can't really remember much because he was so young and also obviously he was traumatised by the event. So he wants to kind of get out, go, go out to this mountain and try and either put it to bed by having one final attempt to try and jog his memory or maybe even try and find out kind of what happens. And he's joined by his older brother uh, and, you know, his kind of girlfriend and a f couple of other friends to try and kind of have this trip out in the mountains to maybe kind of either find out what happened or put it to bed. At the same time, You've got three bank robbers who are kind of trying to get away with their loot and who are holed up on this mountain at the same time. And of course, there is this enduring legend about this kind of wolfman-like creature that may or may not habit these uh, mountainous range. Now, what will happen? You'll have to watch the movie and find out. So this is a lower budget movie, a very low budget movie, I will say. Uh, so let's talk about what I liked and then we'll talk about what I didn't like. So, what did I like? I will say there's one pretty decent sequence where a, a character falls face first into a bear trap. That was good. And I also like the fact we have a, at least one smart decision in this movie where someone uh, drops a handgun and then someone else scurries over and quickly picks it up. So let's move on to what I didn't like. Yes, you may feel I'm being a little bit facetious. Uh, I didn't like this movie. Um, and I'm going to tell you in detail why that is in just a moment. But before I do that, I, you know, I didn't like this movie. It's not very good, but it isn't the most offensive movie I've ever seen. It's not the, 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 the terriblest movie I've ever seen. There may be some enjoyment to be had from this movie because it's so shoddily put together, but it may still have some entertainment value. I will say that possibly for the wrong reasons. So although I'm going to beat this movie in just a minute, you know, I'm going to say, I'm going to have that little asterisk so that I do think, even though I feel this movie is pretty terrible, uh, there is still some strange entertainment through watching this. Okay. So some of this is down to the budget. This movie is low budget and uh, it's not well put together on a technical aspect, on the writing aspect, on the direction, the acting. Nothing is very good about this movie. There are some things that are terrible, but there's not one thing that I would say this movie is good in any in any way. When I rate films, I always try and break them down into their kind of parts. And this is why when someone says, oh, that film was crap, I think, was it? Was there anything good about it at all? Was the music good? Was the editing good? Was the production good? And that's for, I'll give them points for that. But this film, there's genuinely, there's genuinely nothing I would say stands out as good. There's some stuff here which is maybe serviceable. Uh, underhanded compliment, maybe, but but let's talk about what doesn't work. Let's where to start with this one. Okay, um, this story, the twist is immediately apparent ten minutes into this movie. It is so obvious uh, that this whole movie is based on this one twist. And I, think, and I clocked it like literally ten minutes into the movie. I've never seen a trailer or anything for this film. I've just kind of thought, that's, that's what's happened there. And I was right. I'm not going to tell you what it is, obviously, but... So, you know, this movie does not 
do a very good job burying the lead. Uh, I thought it was massively obvious. We'll come back to the writing. So, ugh, right, okay, so we have these six people going up into this woods. The characterization of these, these characters ranges from the cartoonish to the buffoonish to just the kind of like the generic. I mean, there's no one here that is written particularly kind of good, um, believable, um, realistic in any type of way. You know, we have characters that are so over the top, like um, like cartoon characters, you just can't buy into them. Um, or we have super altruistic characters that don't really seem to be real people. Uh, things that people, again, I'm not gonna tell you spoilers of this one, but, you know, decisions are made, characters just seem to go off for no reason and no one kind of questions it. Um, it's, it, it beggars belief, some of the kind of the, the writing, and I was trying to decide it. Is this trying to be like, is this trying to be a serious film or is it trying to be kind of like a comedic vibe to it? And I couldn't quite tell what the intention was because the, the characters are so, like, poorly written in... Um, it's really hard to see what they were going for because like there, there's some sequences that are played sort of straight with no obvious kind of comedic kind of sensibilities but other characters are played so buffoonish you're thinking I, I, I can't tell what kind of this is supposed to be um the acting is is bad um I mean the line delivery the line delivery is so trite and uh you know, forced and hammy, it's embarrassing. Tobin Bell, he's in literally two scenes, of course he's gonna do a good job, but you know, everyone else isn't particularly kind of strong. I mean, the, the very worst, the very best, it's, it's serviceable at some points, That's the, you know, maybe that. We have horrible technical decisions made here. There was a lot of sequences within this movie that is like day for night, where they've kind of like shot what's meant to be night scenes in daylight, but then kind of like put a filter on it. It looks so obvious and so crud. Um, it, it just, it, honestly, it's, it's very distracting. And there's long sequences with this in as well. Um, as I've said, there's a, there's, there is a twist. Oh, I call it a twist. There's a reveal and it's just, oh my God, it's unbelievably obvious. But the, the reason when, it's, when the reveal happens, you know, it's just, it doesn't really make any sense. Can think about it. If you watch this movie and, and think about timelines and how long this has been going on in the interim period and, and, and how motivations work, I don't know, it just, it doesn't really make any kind of sense at all, to be honest with you. Um, the, the, there's not much in the way of, um, of excitement within this movie. Um, it's just a bad film, but in a weirdly kind of entertaining way. We have these characters with these um, the, these bank robbers. It, it amounts to absolutely zero. It, it amounts to absolutely nothing. Um, you know, we have a smattering of other characters, and they just seem to have you know little or no impact on the on the actual story. No one questions anything. It's just like a terrible film. Um, you know, the acting, the performance, the kind of the editing, the, the lighting, um, it's just, I mean, it's like, it's just a, such a poorly put together film. I mean, again, there's, there's budgetary restrictions. I appreciate there's budgetary restrictions in, in a movie like this. I think maybe had it gone for a, like a goofy vibe deliberately, had it, had it being a bit more kind of tongue in cheek. I mean, don't, even like the logistical side of like things like weapons, you know, just don't think about it too much because it doesn't make any sense. Um, oh God, I mean, it's like, I really want to kind of have a bit more of a deeper dive into um, some character motivations, but I don't want to spoil anything for you. But they're just, again, just think about the character motivations. And, and, you know, we have a sequence, for example, where someone is killed in a tent with a knife and they're like slashed. Uh, slashed him with a knife um, and then we get someone goes and checks on them because they've heard a scream and there's no one in the tent where's the blood there's no blood in there just like this guy is, is literally like 90 seconds before slashed the, the, the guy 
the perpetrator wouldn't have time to clean it up. There's not one drop of blood in there. It, it's just ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, it's a 3 out of 10. It's not a good film, and I, I, but it, it has a strange entertainment value in it. Um, you know, it, it is kind of like, oh my God, this is like The Room. You know, if you've ever seen Tommy uh, with those The Room and how kind of clunky that was, it's kind of like that. Um, so weirdly, it, it, it's watchable in some way. But that's like an ironic, you know, recommendation at best. Uh, three out of ten. I can't honestly say this is anything other than a, a fun ironic watch. Outside of a couple of like small sequences that I genuinely liked. Three out of ten. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me comments and I'll look forward to you next time.